Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Today I am showing you how to cut cardstock cutouts larger than the mat, like this big baby Yoda, on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So yesterday I made a baby blanket with a cute baby Yoda on it and you all went nuts for it and told me about all the other ways that you wanted to make more baby Yodas like giant cardstock cutouts. And you've been actually asking me how to do this for a while now. You wanna make other characters really big, cute cardstock characters for the wall or even just standing around, are really popular for parties and kids' rooms, especially things like Disney and Marvel characters. The cool thing is that you can totally cut this Baby Yoda or really any other large character or other image on your Cricut cutting machine. Even though the largest cutting mat that you can buy and use with a Cricut is the 12 by 24 inch size. You can do it even with a 12 by 12 size cutting mat. And I'm gonna show you the secret to doing it today. So for this larger than mat project, you're going to need some cardstock. Really any size from eight and a half by 11 to 12 by 12, all the way up to 12 by 24 inches will work for this project, though the bigger the paper, the less work for you. Always good. This, the weight doesn't matter a lot. You can use 65, 80, or 110 pound, though the heavier weight, the cardstock, the sturdier it will be. You also need a cutting mat, either the 12 by 12 standard size or the bigger 12 by 24 size. And you need some tape, and some spray adhesive and some tacky glue. And if you want to make your cardstock cut out lean against the wall or even stand entirely by itself like Baby Yoda here, you're also gonna want a couple sheets of foam core and a craft knife to cut it with. You cannot cut foam core on your Cricut because it's way too thick. You're also going to need a design that's appropriate for this technique. So one that is all or mostly solid with extra layers like Baby Yoda works best. And there's a lot of character designs over in Cricut Design Space that are perfect for this. So let's head on over there at Cricut Design Space so I can show you where to find them and then I'm gonna show you how to prepare a design for larger than mat cutting on your Cricut. Your first step is to find an image for your large cardstock cutout. Here I am in Cricut Design Space, which is an excellent place to look for images that are appropriate for these big, large cutouts. I recommend you click on images and search for what you are, would like to make. Let's say you wanna make a Mickey Mouse. So we can type in Mickey and you'll probably get lots of images. Excellent, this one looks perfect. We'll click that and say insert images. And indeed, this is perfect. If we look over here on the right, we can see all of the layers and there's lots of um, layers, including a nice big black one. That's gonna be our base layer. This is exactly the kind of image that works really well for this large cardstock cutout technique. There, and there's really quite a lot of these and they're all ready to go and they're already layered for you so that you don't have to do a lot of work. You will still have to prepare them for the large size, but they're already in layers and that makes it much easier. So oh, there's also Marvel characters some really cute ones. These things up here, these are not ideal for what we're doing, but anything that's layered like these would be fine. The Spider-Man would be fine. This Captain America is probably okay. Let me take a look at this one. If it's in layers, it's good. And it is in layers, so this would this would be okay. It's a lot of layers, but that would be okay actually just a lot of layers. So this is the kind of thing you're looking for. It doesn't have to be a character. It can be something else. It can be, you know, just an animal or an inanimate object, whatever it is. You're just looking for layers. And in particular, you want a big background layer. So in this one, we've got these layers here on the right, see these, There's this is the whole body. And having that big background or the ability to make that big background layer through things like welding will make a big difference. So this is the kind of image that you're looking for. You can of course upload an SVG that you find, just be you know, careful of licensing and that sort of thing. 
Now yesterday I showed you how I created the Baby Yoda. So let's remove these from our canvas and let's go find my Baby Yoda. I created Baby Yoda from a licensed Star Wars image that you can buy if you would like to also make this. And here's my Baby Yoda and you can get to him by going to jennifermaker.com slash Baby Yoda. There's also a link in this video description. Let's click on customize. This is what you will see when you um, go to the Baby Yoda file. Yesterday we made this version in the hover carriage. Today I'm going to show you how to do this version in a large, larger than mat size. So very, very big size. So let's first save this. I don't want to accidentally rewrite over everyone's <laughs> Baby Yoda image. So we're going to say Baby Yoda larger than mat because that's what we're doing right now. And I will also save this file that I prepare so that you can see how this works when we're all done. So let's get rid of Baby Yoda in his hover carriage. And we're going to focus on Baby Yoda when he's walking. All right. Now, if you're curious how I made this file because it doesn't start this way, please refer to my video from yesterday on uh, the baby blanket. And I showed you exactly how I created this image starting from a uh, really black, a basic black and white image and how I created layers for it and everything. And this is useful because if there's something that you really just want, in fact, I'll show you what it looked like before. Go to images, and type in Yoda. Let's see, this is what it looked like before I modified it. So you can see it was a lot different. And so this is what I started with and I was able to create layers and change things about it to make it look like Baby Yoda. So you can do this too. Watch that video and you can learn how to create all of these different layers and modify things and it's uh, pretty cool. But you know, probably you're gonna find what you want already in Design Space ready to go. So we're gonna start with this image and for step two, we're gonna prepare this image for cutting. Now, I wanna cut out Baby Yoda much bigger than he is. Right now he is seven inches tall. I want him to be more like 20 inches tall. So I'm gonna reduce the size of my canvas so I have more space. And there's two ways that we can resize things. So I can just click and drag this resize handle in the lower right corner, make him really big like this. Or I can go up to the size fields, at the top of the screen, and change his height there. So I can say 20 inches and press return on my keyboard and he resizes to 20 inches. Whichever one works for you is totally fine. Now let's talk about what size is best to do. Ultimately, you get to decide what size you want and what you need it for, but there are some things to keep in mind that will make uh, it more efficient. So if you're using the 12 by 12 mat, your largest size that you can cut on is 11 and a half by 11 and a half, right? Now, if you're using the 12 by 24, it's um, 11 and a half by 23 and a half. So if you want to cut a little a fewer pieces of paper, you will keep your constraints within like those increments. So for example, this currently is 20 inches, this Baby Yoda is currently 20 inches tall by, I guess, bring them down a little bit, by 30 inches wide. So right now, that's actually pretty good because he will fit, that's, it's very large, so it's a great size, and he will fit uh, quite easily onto three of the 12 by 24 inch mats after I prepare him properly. So it's always something to keep in mind. And um, if you go a little bit beyond, you just be doing a little bit more work, right? So either stay within your mat size increment, right? Um, you know, so like do it in increments of 11 inches, for example, that's what I would recommend. And right now this falls within increments of 11 inches. And we could even go a little bit taller. We could say do 22 inches like this. And I'll make this a little smaller so we can see better and turn off my grid. By the way, do you guys know you can turn off your grid by clicking in the upper quad, right, right here where the rulers meet? If you click there, your grid turns off. 
All right, so here's our baby Yoda and we need to prepare him for cutting because if we try to cut right now, let's go ahead and try it. Let's click make it. You get this image, project incompatible. And it's so vague, it's like, what? What do you mean it's incompatible? What's wrong, what did I do? <laughs> it's kind of an alarming message. And what it is is that it's too big. It can't fit on a mat. And it doesn't say that, uh, but it's okay because now you know. So we're gonna change that. We're gonna make this so it does fit on the mat. And that is that is the secret to making a large project like this. So because we know that, um, so this size fits within our 11 inch incremental size of our mats, right? Um, and so we got 22 inches on one side and about 33 on the other. So that's actually really good. So if you're going to use the smaller mat, that means technically like you could fit six mats into this space, right? If you're gonna use the larger 12 by 24 inch mat, you could get three, one, two, three. Okay, so you have to just, you, you have to look at your mats, decide what you're going to use. I have a, uh, I have a 12 by 24 inch mat. However, not all of my paper is that big. So I'm gonna use a variety but I'm gonna start by slicing everything down into my largest mat size, which is 12 by 24. So I am going to click on shapes and click on square. And I'm going to create, I'm gonna drag this over here, and I'm gonna create a mat size that for my mats. So I'm gonna change its size to be 23 inches long. And I'm gonna click this lock up here in the upper, right up here to, so that I can change the height and width independently. And I'm gonna change its width to be 11.5, which is the maximum for the mat. So now I have an 11.5 by 23 inch rectangle, which is comparable to the size of the mat. We can cut this size on our mat. And if we hover, we put this over Baby Yoda, we can see that we can get like his left side. So if we had two more, we should be able to get him completely in there. So I'm gonna duplicate this twice, just like this. And I'm gonna drag them over and see if I can fit him within these three mats. And I can. So if you're using the smaller mat, you would just have the smaller size. You'd have six here, but but three large mats will fit my big baby Yoda. So that's perfect. So now I need to get these three mats aligned and we're gonna start using them to slice. We're gonna slice up baby Yoda so that we can cut him out. Because the trick here is to get him into pieces that will fit on the mat and then cut him and out, cut out his pieces and then put it back together. You basically, you have to eyeball this. You may want to zoom in so that you can see better whether they're, you want them to just meet, just barely, just, just be side by side, no gap in the middle and no overlap. That is your goal here is to get these three rectangles and we can select all three and go up to a line and do a line top there we go. So this looks really good. So there's my three mats. So I'm going to duplicate this and set it over here. And so now I have these two sets of mats. You might be wondering why did I duplicate it? Because I have this lovely set of mats now and I don't want to have to like recreate it again. Now let's look at our image and decide how, what we actually have to do here. So this is in layers, just like our, the other images I showed you. We have a black layer. Oops, let's ungroup this. So we go up here to ungroup. And we have a black layer, which is too big for a mat, and that needs to be sliced. We have a brown layer, and this brown layer is 9 by 16. So that would fit on our 12 by 24 inch mat. So we don't have to slice that, unless, of course, our mat, is, we don't have the bigger mat. The eyes would all fit and the ears fit, but Baby Yoda himself here is too big. So we have two layers here that we need to make smaller, this green layer and this black layer. So we have over here um, two sets of mats, one for each of these layers that we need to make smaller. I am going to move 
the ears and the eyes down. I can select all those together and move them all down so they're out of our way because we don't have to slice any of those objects. All right, there we go. So we're just gonna focus on the green layer and the black layer and getting those down into matte size pieces. That's our goal, matte size pieces. And it's really not that difficult. So we're gonna take our three mats that we've created earlier, and those are the three rectangles, and we're gonna slide them on top of Yoda. Well, he's under Yoda, that's fine. Just make sure that Yoda is completely within these three mats. Let's do the same thing with these three over here. So I've selected all three, and I'm gonna move them over so that Yoda is completely within those three. I'm gonna move the outline down a little bit. Now it's time to slice. So slicing is to remove overlapping parts of two shapes to create a new shape. Just two shapes, no more and no less. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. So you can see our three mats here. So again, we wanna select just two elements. So I'm gonna select the left mat, oops, the left mat and my green layer, and I'm gonna click slice and I get sliced results, which you can see over here on the right. And I'm gonna delete the ones that I do not want, which is the, the gray matte color. And there's one below it. I'm gonna, I can see it over here in layers. There's always three when you're done. And it's over here, and I will bring it to the front so you can see it. It's, just, it's gray, it sliced right out of that. We don't want that one, we get rid of that one too. If you can't see it, you're not sure, you can just move this layer around. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to stay in position at this point. So let's do the same thing with the middle mat. So we select the rectangle and the green layer and we select slice. Now we get rid of the parts that we don't want. We can click and drag on this and remove this piece. And on the left, same thing. We select the rectangle and we select the green layer and we click slice. And then we get rid of the parts that we don't want, which is these two. So now we're left with Baby Yoda sliced into three pieces that will fit on our mat. You see, so we've got 10 inches by 18 inches and 11.4 by 21.7 and 10.9 by 18.4. Now we can cut Baby Yoda's green layer. We do the same thing for his black outline layer, identical. So we select the rectangle and the black layer itself and we click slice. And then we get rid of the parts that were sliced that out that we don't need. So that's the gray layers essentially. You just click and delete those. Again, we select the two layers that we want to slice and click slice. And then we delete the stuff that we don't want. And our last one, we slice it and delete it. There. Now let's make this a little smaller so that you can see what we're working with here. So we have these three uh, sliced images for each of these two layers and then these extra layers down here, which were small enough. Now, if we click make it, we should not see that project incompatible window and it should take us right to our map previews. Let's see if it worked. Hooray, see, it was awesome, it's, it totally worked. So now we can cut our baby Yoda on the mat size that we have. And that's it. That's really all you have to do to prepare. There's nothing else. So if your image is a lot bigger than this, you just need to make it so that it fits on your size mat. Remember, for the smaller standard size mat, your maximum cutting size is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And on the large 12 by 24 inch mats, your maximum cutting size is 11 and a half by 23 and a half. 
So we, you have to make sure, of course, that you have paper that is this size. So just because you have a cutting mat that's 12 by 24, you might not actually have the paper that fits. Now, I have green paper that is 12 by 24. I have one of Cricut sampler packs. What I don't have, however, is black paper that's 12 by 24. So we're gonna fix that now. I'm gonna click on cancel and we're gonna go back. So for this black layer to fit on my 12 by 12 paper, we need to slice it down into smaller sizes. So I am going to zoom in a bit so I can see this black layer better. And I want to create, just like before, I wanna create rectangles that fit my mat. So I'm gonna click on shape, and click on square, and my square will show up on this side. It's okay, we'll drag it over. And I want the square to be my maximum cutting area for that size mat, which is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And I'm gonna to want to um, make a duplicate and then align them just like I did before, but this time top to bottom. So let's align the side on the left and then zoom in to see, I think it needs to be a little bit closer. We don't want to have, we want to have them just meeting, not overlapping, and not a gap in between. That looks good to me. So we're going to duplicate these two, two more times. Oh wait, you can kind of see that there's a gap there. I don't want that. I don't want any gap. Let's zoom in better so we can see better what's going on. I don't see a gap there. If you're not sure if there's a gap, what you can do is select both of them and change the line type to like something like score. And you can see the score lines are right on top of each other. So it look, that looks fine to me. All right, so that's good. So we're gonna duplicate this twice. And we're gonna wanna center it right over our Yoda our Yoda layers, duplicate another time, and the same thing goes right over the layers, just like this. Let's back out a little bit. And this one is also over the layers, yes. So we've got these two, and let's make sure that everything is aligned just to be absolutely sure that we're um, on top of the images. So align, and we can uh, align those right down the middle, and then align these on the left. All right, there we go. All right, and now we do the same thing as before we slice them. So we just select this layer, these two layers, and we do slice. Remember, if you're having a problem seeing slice, it's because you have more than one layer selected. I'm going to go through and slice everything. So I'm selecting the double, the two layers, and then just clicking slice. And then we'll go back through and delete everything. There we go. So we've sliced everything. So let's zoom in here and get rid of all the extra bits that we don't need. So that's going to be all, everything that's gray, we don't need. So let's just start, that was black. <laughs> let's start deleting. Delete. And then these gray layers as well. There's always a third layer. And then if you can't find it, just click and drag it so that you can get to what's below it. There we go. Now, this black outline should fit on 12 by 12 paper. So let's click make it. And indeed it does, which is great for us. So there we have all of our images on 12 by 12 paper ready to cut. So if you have a smaller size paper, this is a um, helpful thing. You can of course move some of these elements to other pieces of the, you know, to other mats to save on paper. And so we have everything is in 12 by 12 except for our brown layer and our green layer. So let's go ahead and cut everything out so you can see how this works. So click continue, I mean, say okay up here. And uh, just make sure that you're cutting on the right material. 
for what you want. Chances are it's gonna, you're just going to want to use the medium cardstock setting. But if you have a heavier cardstock, you might want to do the heavy cardstock setting or even glitter cardstock, which will uh, have more pressure and will cut through twice. Step three, cut out your cardstock. Now cut out your cardstock on the appropriately sized mats, whether that's all 12 by 12 inch mats, 12 by 24 inch mats, or a combination of the two sizes. Here is an awesome tip. If you have the 12 by 24 mat, but only 12 by 12 paper or eight and a half by 11 paper, you can put two pieces of paper side by side on your larger 12 by 24 inch mat and allow it to cut those two pieces together. If your mat isn't super sticky, you may want to tape the underside of the two sheets of paper together before you place them on your mat. Now I was able to do, to do it without taping, but taping is probably safer because it will prevent any corners from sticking up as the mat moves through the cutting machine. Because if your corners stick up, it can snag. Step four, piece your cutouts back together. Once all of your pieces of cardstock are cut, make sure you know how to put it all back together. I recommend you refer to the images on the Cricut Design Space screen that you cut from to make sure you know which pieces go where and in which orientation. After verifying you know where all the pieces go in your cardstock cutout, it's time to begin taping the layers that you broke apart back together again. It's important that you tape the pieces together on the back side of each layer. Again, refer to the screen and Cricut Design Space to know which is the front and which is the back of your design. If you make Baby Yoda, you'll need to tape together the black layer, the green layer, and maybe the brown layer if you cut it out on two pieces of paper like I did. Step five, attach your layers. With your layers put back together, you can now start attaching your layers together. Start with the bottom layer and work your way up. Use a thin layer of tacky glue or permanent spray adhesive on the back of each subsequent layer to attach them. If you make the Baby Yoda, this is the order in which I attach them. Green layer, then the brown layer, then the black outline layer, and then the ears, and then the eyes, and the mouth, and the nose. Step six, and this is optional, add foam core and a stand. If you plan to just put your cardstock cutout on a wall, you are likely all done. But if you want him to lean against a wall, or even stand on his own, which is super cool, you need to add a stiffer backing to him because cardstock alone is not enough. It'll be super flexible with just the cardstock. I recommend a foam core backing. To add a foam core board backing, place a foam core sheet down on your work surface and then put your cardstock cutout on top of the foam core. Align the cutout so the bottom edge of it is against the bottom edge of your foam core board. Now trace your character cutout on the foam core with a pencil. Using a sharp craft knife, cut along the inside of the pencil line. So it's just a little bit smaller than your cardstock cutout. Repeat with any additional pieces of foam core as necessary. You might need two or three or even more, depending on how big your image is. And then tape or glue all of the foam core pieces together. And of course, you need to attach your cardstock cutout to the foam core. I recommend spray adhesive so you have a nice even coverage, but tacky glue is fine so long as you keep it thin and don't glob it up in too many spots because otherwise it can come through and look kind of weird. Now, if you'd like to create an easel-like stand so your cardstock cutout can stand on its own, cut a four inch strip of foam core board that's about 80% of the height of your cutout. Score a line about four inches down on that strip, but do not cut all the way through. Then fold over that scored section. Now flip your cardstock cutout over with your foam core attached, of course. Align the bottom of your stand with the bottom of your cutout. 
fold the scored section underneath and then tape that scored section to the back of your cardstock cutout. Now just prop up your cardstock cutout with that easel stand and it'll stand all by itself. And this is how it looks and I thought it went together really quite easily. It's a little bit big so that can be a little awkward. You're just going to want some space to work. But otherwise, it was just put like putting together a really easy puzzle. It looks really good. And what's cool about these is that you don't look at them, you know, from just inches away. You're usually looking at them from quite a ways away. And you can't see the seam lines on the paper or any little imperfections where you didn't quite get it lined up exactly. It looks actually very good from the distance that you would normally view something this large at. So don't worry about it if it's not exactly perfect. So I hope you can see how it's really quite possible to cut nearly any size image. Imagine all of the cool things that you can make with uh, this technique, decor for bedrooms, parties, holidays, you name it. Now, if you're curious how to cut vinyl really big like this, I have a whole tutorial on how to cut large wall decals like this super cute unicorn. You can get the details, the video, and the free unicorn file at jennifermaker.com slash large wall decal. Now, if you have any questions about how to make these super awesome larger than mat cardstock cutouts, please just leave your question below this video or ask over in our Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. You'll get the fastest response there. And don't forget that I have a Cricut giveaway going on right now for the chance to win a Cricut cutting machine. Get all the, de the giveaway details at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And that's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back to show you how to make decorative cake toppers for that special birthday or party that's coming up. Now remember, I'm always interested in your project ideas. If you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. <laughs>